Welcome to this Education City webinar. Um, so a bit of a home learning guide uh, for yourselves, uh, just to kind of go through the bits on Education City that might support you in the current situation. Obviously the bits um, that your children will see, as well as what you can do to help yourself um, and to help your, um, your children in that aspect as well. So uh, for those of you who have been to previous webinars, um, you'll know me already. My name's Hayley. I'm the education consultant here at Education City. Um, I was a primary school teacher for a while before joining Education City um, about three years ago, I believe. Um, I'm not yet a parent, but I have consulted with a couple of colleagues of mine who are parents, um, just to get their advice on a few of these areas as well and what we can do to help you best. So um, what we're gonna be looking at are um, sort of accessing Education City, how do you um, get logged on, finding work that teachers will upset for you, um, the tools that can support you in supporting your child or children. So I know a couple of things I know from myself, um, things that I used to teach my students were completely different to how I learned them when I was at school. So a couple of those areas might sort of help you in understanding how your children are learning as well. And obviously um, continuing that independent study for any work that they don't get set, they can continue independently as well. And then just looking at being able to track and um, the progress of your children, what gaps they might have in their learning and what you can do to try and fill those gaps up a little bit. OK, um, so just before we get starting, started, I do need to point out the account I'm going to be using is that of a made up student. Um, so don't worry about any of the information that you may see. It is also um, an English account. It may appear slightly differently if you're joining me today from outside of England, um, but the basics of everything, the um, resources that I will show will be um, pretty much the same. Also, any questions that you might have for me as we're going through, please do let me know. Um, you'll notice on your taskbar, there is a Q&A button. What that enables you to do is ask questions live. They will appear uh, for me on my screen so I can answer those for you. There is the function within that to ask questions anonymously as well if you would rather do that. And then I can answer those as quickly um, and as best as I possibly can. If you do decide to put questions in the chat feature though, do um, be aware that that will not pop up on my screen. So I won't be aware that you've popped any um, questions in until I check. So just a little bit of housekeeping just there. Um, head over to educationcity.com and we will get logged in. So in any case, if you're trying to log in, go.educationcity.com will get you logged in. And here's my student page just here. What I'm going to briefly do is just log out just so that I can show you um, what might appear when you're looking to log in. So when you go to um, educationcity.com, um, you may have been given sort of a one single sign on, um, a Google single sign on for, for your school. You can use those down this right hand side. If you just have a username and password, this is where you enter that information in. Now, a couple of tips for you, um, because if you do get in touch with Education City about your child's login information, we don't have access to that. We cannot access or give out any student information, including their login. So if you don't have your login uh, for your child or children, you need to contact their teachers and they will be able to provide those for you. Quick tip for you though, um, copy it exactly as it appears on the card. In many cases, it may be set case sensitive. So do copy it exactly as it appears. And for the password, this is something that I come across quite frequently. Um, if it contains what looks like a capital I, so like a line, um, it may in fact be a lowercase l, or it will be a number one. So try a couple of those versions beforehand. Um, so that is for so a lowercase l or a capital I or a number one. They all, for some reason, look the same. I, um, have been informed as well that um, a five and an S look quite similar, as do a zero and um, an O. 
So just to check those in your usernames or your passwords as you're trying to log on. And another common problem, making sure the country is logged into the right one. I know that sounds silly, uh, but do make sure that you have selected the correct country from that list. Just click into it. That list will appear just there and you can log in. And here we are. This might look familiar to you if you have already logged into your child or children's um, account just here. What you will find, first of all, um, is that classwork and homework, so any work that has been set from teachers, will appear in one of these two um, tiles. If I click into classwork just there, you can see there's a couple of items. You will be able to see what teacher has set it as well. So if your child has maybe um, sort of two teachers, um, you'll be able to sort of see exactly who set that. So you will be able to contact that teacher if you know sort of if that child's are having issues with a certain area. Um, some of those items may be due by a certain point. So this particular folder of work is due today. Um, if I head over here, you can see homework. There's this plants one that's due on the 20th there as well. And when you click into them, it they may appear differently. If you open one up that looks like this as an example and there's some ticks, that means that your child has already started completing the work in this folder. And teachers will be able to see that when they log in as well. They will be able to keep track of whereabouts your, your children are, sorry, um, in that particular um, folder of work. Um, if I had just back using this kind of little breadcrumb trail here, into classwork, you will also find that some folders will appear with this kind of locked symbol. That means that it has been sequenced specifically in that order by your child's teacher. So it has to be done in the order that they've set it in. Nice thing is though, if I complete this learn screen, this one, move on to this one, I can always come back to the ones that I've completed. So. That's always a worthwhile. And you'll find that there might be um, a couple of different types of um, resources that they have set for you. So just heading back onto the homepage just here. Um, what you'll find is uh, those different resources have those different icons. Um, and they will just sort of tell you what sort of resource it is. So starting off over here, this is a learn screen. It's a combination of a video and a PowerPoint presentation. These are really good for independent study because they do sort of inform children of um, all of the information that they need to complete their learning before maybe moving on to an activity. If I head into this one, just to give you a bit of an example, you've got an objective there that they're working towards. You see the needs of plants. I can click start, we can have a bit of a chat, we can pause that, we can fast forward to the next slide if we need to using the buttons in the bottom left corner. Um, and then you've got your slide selectors here. Um, benefit of this is that if a child's done this particular page, maybe they want to move on to the next page, they can move down a little bit. Looking at this, actually, I wanted to look at the water stuff so I can move back a step as well if I want to. Um, so they can be completely in control of their own learning uh, by those slide selectors as well as this sort of play rewind fast forward, the video, the old school video that they know nothing about. Uh, there we go. Uh, heading back over here, we've got um, in addition to those learn screens, we've got some activities. Now, the benefit of the activities are, number one, these will test um, your child's understanding of a particular area. So what you'll be able to do is once this has been completed, you'll have a score just here, a best score. Um, obviously, if that is sort of 30, 40%, you might want to encourage your child to redo it to try and improve that best score. And for every one, the activities get marked for, um, for teachers. So for every time that your child attempts this, teachers will be able to see each attempt and the score for each attempt as well. So it is always worthwhile having another go, try and improve those best scores. Um, and there'll be a range of questions in there. Um, 
the amount of questions I believe differ depend upon the subject area and um, uh, the year group as well. So obviously if your children are older, they may get more questions. Another tool that you might have is a think it. Again, identifiable by this little sort of thought bubble over here. And these are really good for sort of that independent thinking, um, really sort of getting the brain working a little bit. So you can see here you've got this problem, Manu is asking, if you were to observe this plant over a period of two weeks, what changes might you see? Maybe your child could note them down in a little notebook. Um, a teacher may want to bring this into a lesson uh, for the children so they can note down their answers, they can share them in sort of their interactive Zoom lessons or whatever platform is used for those online learning. And within the answer, you've got a bit of a sort of a sort of prompt, if you like. So this is what Manu's come up with. Flowers might get, um, it might get taller, flowers might to start to appear. And then you've got a bit of a fun fact. Now, the nice thing about Think It is that within the answer, um, they will either have like a bit of a fun fact, they will explain a piece of key vocabulary, um, or they will prompt a next step sort of greater depth question. So do explore those um, in your own time. They are brilliant. Um, but really good for sort of project work and investigations um, if you want to set your child off on an independent project. There we go. Back on my homepage, mentioning about sort of setting your child off on an independent project, you do have access to resources on Education City. So you've got the subject area just here and the search content function. You can head in here let's say your child is doing sort of multiplication, head into maths, find your child's year group, and you'll see all the different tools that your child can use to um, prepare themselves to fill in those gaps in learning. Even something like a topic tool, um, we've got place value, we've got learning the time just here, I believe in year four is a really good one to do it with times tables. Here we go, this one just here. Um, you could put this one on the um, screen for your child, maybe time, five minutes, two minutes, whatever it is. Each time they spin, they get the question, they write down the answer, they spin again. Um, so it, it can be done completely independently as well. And if you are just looking for, let's say, uh, the nine times table, you could just spin this one. So if your child is just learning the nine times table, you can just spin one of them as well if you need to. So do explore those really, really useful um, sort of bundles just there. And obviously you can sort of have a look at those as well if you want to sort of see what methods um, a child is using for formal written methods as an example. On that note, really, really useful in English or literacy. If your child is doing phonics, Take this from a teacher that could never teach phonics. I was so bad at it. Head over to um, Key Stage 1, or I believe it's um, the early section for Scotland, and you'll find a phonics bundle just here. The benefit of this is that it goes from phase two right up to phase five, and it's got those sound sets. So let's say you're doing um, the gok sounds, as I like to call them. Um, each of those comes with a learn screen as well as activities that your child can do and activity sheets as well, sort of printables that encourage um, sort of that learning. But the learn screens show you how to pronounce the sounds. Now, this is something I was always really bad at, being completely honest. Um, let's say, for instance, you're doing um, the k sound, the curly k, as I used to call it. Um, you can listen to the sound, sort of replicate how it is taught that particular sound. And if you click onto the letter Here itself, the letter you could see it how it's included up. within each sound. of these. You've also got that magic finger. So children can sort of trace it on the screen um, and sort of practice their handwriting with it there as well. Do explore those. They are absolutely brilliant. There we go. Have, have a play with it. Have a play with it. Use your child's login and have a bit of a play. You will come across things that are absolutely brilliant. Um, and as I mentioned, those sort of 
icons are replicated no matter what subject area you choose. Now, there are some lovely videos um, that you can always play with your child as well, including the times table videos of learning times tables. You will get sick of them after a while, but then after that, you start to love them a little bit. So um, yeah, have a look at them. Um, do check out the eight times table video, it's brilliant. We do also have our games. So um, heading over here, we've got our play live games. Now in English, this is kind of like a giant game of boggle. So it does encourage sort of children to um, create words and obviously spell those words correctly as well. What you'll also find, um, particularly for the younger year groups, uh, the games that we've got um, sort of differ. Obviously, they get more difficult the higher up the school that you go. Um, and we've also got some new splat games. These are our whack-a-mole um, games where sort of looking at capital letters, you can see here, punctuation even. Um, and these sort of things are great. Let's say your child has done a morning's worth of learning. Um, you're really proud of them. You can use the games as a reward. The other thing you can do with them, and don't feel guilty about this because this was mentioned by one of my colleagues. Um, if a child has completed all the learning that the teacher has set for the day, challenge them to the game. Say, okay, I want you to go on to your Play Live edition, for example, or your Play Live multiplication. Um, and I want you to try and beat your last best score. If you're into games, you might even want to have a go at it and try and set a best score for your children to complete. They are very fun. Um, but you can also sort of say, OK, I want you to do the seven times table game and try and get to this particular stage, get a score of this when you do that. Um, and the nice thing is as well, all of the Play Live games, um, children can complete the game, compete sorry, against other children. So it does mean you can log in to your iPhone um, or um, tablet. Your child can log into a laptop and you can compete against each other. So lots of fun, particularly if you're competitive like me. Um, but yeah, use those games as rewards, but also use them to extend learning um, because they are there for you as a part of sort of an extended learning. They're all educational as well. Now, I mentioned about those activities getting marked for you. Any assessments your children do will get marked for you as well. Um, teachers will be able to see those and you'll be able to see the scores that your children got there as well. So in this little sort of trophy icon, um, any scores that were accessed from classwork or homework, but also that pick and play. So if your child completes an activity via the subject area, that score will be noted. You can see these are assessments just here. You've got a score and a best score. Wherever you see a best score, it means your child has had another go and competed against himself to get a better score. Uh, I think that's always nice for them to do that. There you go. Um, and the nice thing is as well, you can always select play again to try and improve that best score once again. So it is about being competitive, but be competitive with yourself, which I think is the best score. Back on the homepage, you will also find your revision journals just here. Again, extended learning, these are brilliant. So um, assessments that children do, a lot of the assessments will um, compile a revision journal for children. And this will sort of be filled with content um, that the system has prescribed based upon the questions that they've gotten incorrect. So this is all based upon the gaps in the child's learning. So if we head into the revision here, you can see sort of the test, the score that they got, and they can click to revise just here. And you can sort of have a look. Um, it's full of learn screens and activities that they can work their way through. And the nice thing is as well, because you have access to this, you can even have a bit of a look. Okay, so timetable's just there. Money's also a bit of an issue. Head back to the home page over to the search content function in that top right hand corner and you can search for money and you can sort of create work and say to your kid okay well I've noticed you've got this in your um, revision journal I want you to have a go at this again it's all about sort of extending that learning and filling the gaps that they've got we've got to remember that um, these 
little people have been off school since this time last year in many cases. Um, they're going to have a few gaps in learning. That's OK. And what we want to do is try and um, do everything we can to fill in those gaps so um, we can help our little heroes uh, achieve a little bit more. And you can see here, we've got the money just there that we've filtered down. We can filter down via those thing kits, that open-ended question. We can have a look for learn screen so that they can sort of practice something and support them in their learning and activities once they feel comfortable enough um, to have another go at something. You can obviously filter down as well via their year group. So if you are just looking for year three, for example, you've got that information there. And there we go. Um, the only other thing I've got to tell you about is the online safety bundle that we have. Um, if our children are working on Education City online for the majority of the day, we do want to keep them safe. So in the online safety bundle, you'll find a load of tools, again, extension pieces that you can um, give to your child when they've completed any work. Okay, I want you to do this. I want you to tell me how you're staying safe online. How are you staying safe online when you're playing these games? So uh, all of that linking back to obviously keeping children safe, keeping them busy and keeping them active as well. Nothing to stop you from telling them to get into the garden to go and see what plants are there uh, before they have a look at any um, plant work that they might have. I do hope that has been useful to you. Um, as I mentioned previously, um, just before we get on to questions, um, if you do require your child to log in, get in touch with their teacher. They're the ones that will be able to provide those for you. I'm afraid we do not have access to that information to be able to provide that for you. Also, um, we do no longer um, have home educator accounts for Education City. We have, however, um, given all schools in the UK the option of having a free Education City access during this strange, strange time. Um, so do get in touch with your school if you don't have Education City already, and they might be able to get some free access from us for your children. Has anybody got any questions? Just checking those. No, a lot of information has been given to you today. The best thing to do is have a play around with it, um, Education City, because then obviously you'll know more to pass on to your children. No more questions. So remember, we are offering that free access to all schools. So ask um, your child's teacher to contact us at educationcity.com. Uh, and uh, we'll be able to provide them some free uh, access. I hope that's been useful to you. Um, have a lovely weekend. Have a great next few weeks. Um, and maybe I'll see you again in the future at maybe some future webinars. Until then, take care and stay safe. Bye bye.